This is a fellow that came to us in Oregon that had nasal polyps that were so large that when you looked at him from the front, what normally should have just been really nice and narrow through here, um, what we saw in this fellow was this area of his nose was actually pushed all the way out like this. When we looked inside of his nose, he had, when he tipped his head back, normally what you would see when you look up into the nostril would just be these little nasal turbinates that go in like this. In his case, though, he actually had these what looked like giant water blisters that were completely filling the nose and pushing downward and pushing outward against his, his nasium and his, his nasal passageways and against growing off the septum and the uh, nasal concha. What we see in this case, though, was allergic polyposis. He had multiple food allergies, and every time he would eat, all of his lymphatic tissue would swell to the point that it would actually obstruct his breathing. We went through and evaluated his food sensitivities and got him off of those, and he came in after just, it was, it was a week later, his follow-up appointment, and he said, watch this, he said, I haven't been able to breathe through my nose for 26 years. Okay? That was pretty neat. Mm -hmm. And in his case, the other thing that we found was terrible gingival and periodontal disease. His teeth were almost gone um, because the amount of pus and um, purple irritated gums, the roots were all exposed and just had, he was told that at age 18, that he wouldn't have his teeth till he, to 21. And here he was in his 60s and his, his mouth was just a mess. Uh, it, the probing depths on all of his pockets were the, the least deep was eight millimeters and the deepest were up to 16. And we just used in his case, um, his was a pretty neat case. I actually presented it to a dental group. Um, in his case, we got him off the foods that he's allergic to and then we actually treated his periodontal uh, disease with uh, neem oil and neem bark for six weeks and all of his probing depths were reduced by half and that was the only treatment that we gave. We didn't even do a cleaning or anything, didn't even ask for prophylactic treatment. We just treated him with neem and every one of those probing depths reduced by half. That was a pretty phenomenal case. Um, but again, sleep apnea, definitely. Daytime apnea, dyspnea, he can't even breathe during the day. So he's a mouth breather, right? And what happens when you're mouth breathing? The tongue gets dry, the, the retropharyngeal space <coughs> becomes dry, all of this area becomes dry. And so now as his tongue is hitting the back of his throat, it's sticking. And so now he can't breathe at night, right? Even during the day, he's having difficulty breathing. So what do his <coughs> teeth look like? Even worse, because he's breathing through his mouth, the saliva is drying in between the spaces and so when you look down at the tooth margin which should be a nice healthy tooth margin he had all this calculus that was built up in between because he was mouth breathing so heavily but on those roots again they were exposed clear down into the gum like this okay and all of that was a calculus build up pretty tough so again polyps are a common cause of dyspnea or difficulty breathing and oft times can be associated, and again in his case, was very strongly linked to food allergies. Okay? Now here's the interesting thing. In his case, I said to him, when does it seem that your um, polyps get worse? And he knew right off. He said, when I drink alcohol. Well, what do you think you ought to stop? Well, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> not alcohol of course not alcohol uh, that was the first thing we had to get him to stop <clears throat> and so he said I'll do that after I get back from my cruise right <laughs> so he took the supplements and he went on his cruise had a great time and he came back got off of the rest of those things and that's when that was the seven day period when he'd been off of those food allergies and he was actually able to breathe again so Pretty unique case, and uh, but very, very common. You'll be surprised at how many people actually have nasal polyps. And uh, as a dentist, I know you don't intentionally explore the nasal cavities, but they're always there. Um, I, would, I would suggest, OK, 
okay? As you're looking, to actually just press gently the nose one time and just with the light, when the light's there, just look quickly. And what you'll see in that, again, will be those tight reddened blisters, these uh, full mucosal looking blisters. Those are nasal polyps. And those are very, very common, the telltale signs of food allergies. The other thing that we may be looking at is an infected tooth that's putting pressure up onto the sinus that's actually causing an airway obstruction or maxillofacial pressure, which is very common. Okay, we know that. Um, another common... But dentists don't know what it is. No. <laughs> but we, we're aware of it. Yeah. Okay, and then one more thing. Okay. When we look in that nasal passageway, um, what we're going to see also is a very common appearance of way back up in, you'll see where the uh, mucosal membranes will be very inflamed, but you'll see little mucus threads that will actually uh, almost like spider webs be crossing, okay? And that's uh, very indicative of sinusitis. So when we look at sinusitis, what are we referring to? Itis is inflammation, sinus, okay, sinus inflammation. And when we look at acute sinusitis, most commonly that's associated with respiratory allergies. But what about your friends who've had then maxillary and frontal sinus surgeries, and they've had these scraped out because they have a condition called chronic sinusitis. So the treatment most commonly is going to be go in and scrape those out and then use a neti pot, stand on your head and get it to rinse out. Do that whole rigmarole, right? 90, wow. I actually made that one. Wow. 94% of chronic sinusitis is caused by a yeast infection, okay? You can try and try and try and try to treat that with garlic and clove and olive leaf, and it may work, okay? A Z-pack. A Z-pack, but sometimes we actually have to use a prescription on that one, Diflucan, <clears throat> okay? Diflucan is a tough, tough drug on the liver, and uh, most of you would know diflucan because of a yeast infection, and usually it's only given two to three days maximum because of how hard it is on the liver. Chronic sinusitis, though, if we have to actually treat it, it's 21 days of diflucan to really get rid of a chronic sinusitis if, if we've tried the conservative methods first. Okay? Sometimes it just has such a deep foothold, we have to resort to a bigger gun. Okay? So that's my opinion, um, and that's been my experience and some of my mentors' experiences as well. So, Just so you're aware, there, when we look at chronic, and this is the person that has the chronic post-nasal drip, I just don't feel like I can ever get anything to come out of my nose. I wake up every morning and put in my throat. These are really tough situations, okay? Please. So what do you think of a neti pot? I think they have some, so the question is, what do you think about neti pots? For some people, they have some merit. Uh, for just rinsing out, especially in acute sinusitis, um, for people who have um, dry mucosal passages and there's been a blockage for a season, those can be helpful. But sometimes <clears throat> what we find is when these sinuses have been blocked for an extended period of time, the entryway and exitway is so narrow that when you get the water in, then it causes inflammation or swelling. It'll actually cause a fluid uh, lock in there. And so those people actually get a lock and more pressure because it can't evacuate. And that just creates a beautiful incubator for bacteria on top of the yeast. So again, you've got to be and use some wisdom in that. Use some prudence. Um, it's not the home run for everything, right? And really, when we're playing baseball, we 99% of the time we're not hitting home runs, right? Half the time we strike out, and then the other half, uh, actually it's even more. Two-thirds of the time we strike out, one-third of the time we're just lucky to get on base. So we really want to look at this then in a very 
logical, systemic approach. Is it acute sinusitis? Is it chronic sinusitis? Is the body allowing yeast to be there? And I've, I've already done the yeast diet. I've done that for months and I've noticed no changes. I've done all the Z-Packs and I've done all of the anti-infectives and there's no change. Well, could it be that your body's allowing yeast as a commensurate because you have increased blood sugar and you're pre-diabetic? Okay. Could it be that all the heavy metals that you're either ingesting or already had implanted into your teeth is actually your body trying to create a barrier because you have heavy metal toxicity? We've really got to start to think outside the box rather than just going in and saying, boy, this looks like chronic sinusitis. You really need to have those sinuses opened up. So let's go ahead and just take a bigger knife and go ahead and just cut that out because that will do a good job, right? Well, not really. Well, then we can go in and cauterize it, and so we'll just burn the sinuses now so they're not bleeding. That should do it for us, right? And so we have a young man that calls from St. George.